In this lesson, you'll subtract three-digit numbers. Here's an example. 825 minus 497. First, we rewrite the problem in columns like this. When you rewrite a subtraction problem, you must always line up the numbers so that the ones place of the first number is above the ones place of the second number, like this. The numbers in the other places must line up as well. Here, the tens place and hundreds place of the first number are above the same places in the bottom number. You must be careful when you write a problem like this on paper to make sure the places in each number line up. Now let's subtract the numbers. We always start with the ones place. We have 5 minus 7, so we must take a 1 from the tens place to make 10 ones. We show that we took a 1 by clicking on the 2 to cross it out. And we enter a 1 in this box. We enter a 1 here to show that we made the 10 ones from the 1 in the tens column. We now have 15 in the ones column. 15 minus 7 is 8. So we enter 8 in the answer box in the ones column. In the tens column, we have 1 minus 9. So we need to take 100 from the hundreds column to make 10 tens. We click on the 8 in the hundreds column and enter a 7 here to show that we took 100. And we enter a 1 here to show that the 100 became 10 tens. In the tens column, we now have 11 minus 9, which is 2. So we enter 2 in the answer box for the tens column. In the hundreds column, we have 7 minus 4, which is 3. So we enter 3 in the hundreds column answer box. Our final answer is 328. Here's another example. 529 minus 483. First, we rewrite the problem in columns like this. As before, we line up the numbers so that the digits in each place of the first number are above the digits in the same place of the second number. In the ones place, we have 9 minus 3, which is 6. So we enter 6 in the answer box for the ones column. In the tens column, we have 2 minus 8. So we take a 1 from the hundreds column to make 10 tens before we can subtract. When we take a hundred, we click on the five to cross it out and enter a four in this box. We enter a one here to show that the hundred we took became ten tens. In the tens column, we now have twelve minus eight, which is four. So we enter four in the answer box in the tens column. In the hundreds column, we have four minus four, which is zero. So we enter zero in the answer box for the hundreds column. Our answer now has a zero on the left end. We call this a leading zero. We don't write leading zeros when we write numbers, so we need to remove this zero. Our final answer is 46. When you work a problem and see that you are going to enter a leading zero in the answer box, you can just ignore the zero and leave the answer box blank. If you enter the zero, you should delete it before you click the Enter button, since answers written with leading zeros are not written correctly. Here's our last example. 672 minus 192. First, we rewrite the problem in columns, making sure we line up the numbers in each place like this. In the ones place, we have 2 minus 2, which is 0. So we enter 0 in the answer box for the ones column. In the tens column, we have 7 minus 9. So we take a 100 from the hundreds column to make 10 tens. We click on the 6 in the hundreds column to cross it out. And we enter a 5 above it. We enter a 1 here to show that the 100 became 10 tens. In the tens column, we have 17 minus 9, which is 8. So, we enter 8 in the answer box for the tens column. In the hundreds column, we have 5 minus 1, which is 4. So, we enter 4 in the answer box for the hundreds column. Our final answer is 480. 
In the remainder of this lesson, you'll work problems just like these on the computer. Enter your work in the answer boxes above the problem and your answer in the answer boxes below the problem.